Deborah, thank you very much for joining us today. So you've been at Unipart for 28 years, and obviously over that period of time you've seen a lot of change. Maybe you could give our viewers a little bit of background about yourself, but also about what Unipart's doing. Yeah, sure. So I've been, as you say, I've been with Unipart for 28 years, always within the HR function and sort of associated corporate responsibility areas. And over that time, you know, I've seen Unipart grow from an organisation very rooted in the automotive industry to the really diverse organisation that we are today with operations in all over the globe in rail, manufacturing, logistics, consultancy, and, and more latterly digital. Um, so as you know, we've evolved as an organisation with a very strong culture and set of values. And those have always been around inclusivity actually at, the, at their very heart. And it's all about uh, giving people power over their day-to-day -day activity, involving people in decision-making on a day-to-day -day basis, and really harnessing the intellectual capital of every single person that works for us. Um, and alongside that, of course, we've had what you would normally expect in terms of you know, good corporate responsibility activities, in terms of community engagement, well-being, employee engagement, and all the kind of equal opportunity policies and activities that you would expect in a responsible organisation. So when, if you measure what you do now compared to what you did maybe not 28 years ago, but a few years into your, your, um, your role at Unipart, things have changed massively in terms of the, 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 the amount of time you devote to the, these areas. Absolutely they have. And actually, particularly over the last couple of years, that the focus on, in particular, employee engagement and the very close relationship between employee engagement and well-being has been really, really noticeable. And then even more recently than that, the, the relationship between employee engagement, employee well-being, and actually being an inclusive and diverse organisation, and really giving people that sense of belonging and feeling part of something, and the relationship that that then subsequently has on levels of productivity. Um, and I think in particular during this pandemic that, we've, that we're still going through, the, the spotlight has really come in on, on diversity and inclusion and equality. And so I think every organisation is really raising their game in that area. And we're doing exactly the same thing. Yeah, we'll talk to Laura in a sec about what you've been doing during lockdown and plans for the future. But do you feel it's, it's, a, I say it's a battle, but do you think it's something you're, you're making good progress in, you know, in terms of measuring where you were then and where you are now? Are you making a lot of progress or there's still lots of challenges that you've got ahead of you? There's always going to be challenges in this area and, and I think one of the key things is, is having the information to your fingertips and Laura's going to talk about that shortly. I feel we are making progress um, but you know as with a lot of these things it's small careful steps because what we want to do is make change that has got longevity rather than kind of you know putting sticking plasters over things. It's, it's the unipart way of doing things. It's got to be in, we're in it for the long term. And what would you say one of the most rewarding parts of your job is at the moment? I'd say the most rewarding part of my job is the, the engage, seeing the levels of employee engagement, being able to see what, to, to respond to what our people uh, are reaching out for in terms of their sort of broader well-being. And actually, you know what, getting that anecdotal feedback from people, it's great to look at stats and data, but nothing quite replaces somebody reaching out with a phone call or an email to say thank you, that they've, you know, benefited from some of our well-being and diversity programmes. You know, it means a lot. I'm going to put you on the spot. Have you got a particular highlight where you feel, you know, that we're really making progress here. This is really, we're really making a difference and we're really getting that engagement. Anything in particular that really stands out to you? I, I think my personal highlight actually has been the activities that we've undertaken during October to mark um, Black History Month. Again, Laura's going to talk about that, but for me that, that really meant something and it was something we haven't done before and I felt really, really proud. Brilliant. Well, love to see you. Over to Laura. Laura, thanks for joining us. So complete contrast to Deborah, you just joined Unipart in March, I believe. Yes, I did. Um, so I have a background in dance and specifically hip hop dance, which got my interest in the black civil rights and civil rights in general for people. Um, so I developed over time into doing an international human rights law degree and just grew my foundation from there and then just knew that EDIBS was kind of where I wanted to be and where, what I wanted to work on. So I joined Unipart just the week before lockdown and have been heavily involved in the changes that have happened over the last few months um, that Deborah started to talk about. 
And so we're talking about EDI today, and you refer to it as EDIB, so the B stands for? Belonging. So that is that a Unipart edition? Um, it is something that other companies talk about as well, but it's something that we felt really aligns with the Unipart way and our inclusivity as part of the business. So. And so you joined at a very strange time for everybody. From uh, primary school you were teaching? Secondary. Secondary school, sorry. Um, and so you've gone into, into Unipart working from home, I presume? Yes. And so how has lockdown been in, in your, your particular role? What sort of challenges have you had? What sort of results have you seen over that particular period? And how have things changed, really? Yeah, so my role actually um, has evolved. I came in as a temporary person and supported heavily with the COVID um, communications, really. Um, and then became a HR specialist working under Deborah for uh, corporate and social responsibility, which um, I also have a lot to do with the wellbeing agenda and the diversity and inclusion agenda that we refer to as EDIBS. And so what been the real, I asked Deborah about highlights, you know, what sort of achievements have you had during lockdown? Um, what have been the, the great things that you've done during lockdown? So um, one of the main things that has changed with um, Unipart is as part of our employee engagement survey for the first time we included ethnicity data um, which allowed us to capture a little bit more about our demographics and the people that work for us in the in the, com the country that we work within and interestingly we found that we align quite well with the the general country and the census um, for example three percent black people currently in the uk um, probably updated next year with the new census, but we found that we had 3.32% black people. That also aligned with the 6% Asian, we have 64 and so on and so forth. So um, it was really positive feedback for us and we want to go forward kind of using those kind of benchmarks, looking at disciplinary procedures and also our recognition uh, programme called Mark in Action too, to make sure that it's kind of fair and equal across the board. So, Laura, in terms of numbers of employees across Unipart, how many are we talking about? Um, 6,000, I believe, in total, roughly. Um, being new, I'm, I'm new to the numbers too, but about 6,000, yeah. So, what's your role going forward and, and what's, what's going to be new for Unipart? Yeah, so as part of my role, um, we've started to build a diversity and inclusion steering group, which is heavily impacting what we're doing at Unipart. Um, and we kind of stress that it's no longer enough to not be racist or discriminatory or ageist or sexist. We have to be anti those things. So going forward, we put together a steering group that has um, a number of work streams from training and recruitment to the CSR programme that I run to data collection and protection of those data um, and also kind of building the case with our exec board and getting them to really kind of take hold of the agenda as well. And how will you measure the success of that particular program? Um, so we, we will continue to collect data and ask for feedback throughout our engagement surveys and things like that. But also across October, which is our first month that we've really started our agenda, um, we've realised that the wellbeing, the diversity and also the CSR agenda align quite heavily together and they should be kind of part and parcel to each other. Um, so within that, we we've wanted to um, include kind of CSR events and things that our colleagues can get involved with. So October was a really successful month for us as a starting point being Black History Month and Deborah mentioned it earlier, but we ran things like Lunch and Learns, which we had a huge um, contribution to. Many people joined the cause and contributed in ways that they had their own personal experiences or knowledge and things that really added to the value of it. We also ran a canteen lunch menu that was cultural, that aligned with the cultures that we see within the business. Um, and we shared articles and statistics and facts throughout the month to kind of raise awareness and bring that forward. And we're doing the same now for November and with Movember. So we're continuing to work through a CSR agenda um, that we've kind of established for the whole year and would continue to hopefully run far into the future and we get a lot of feedback from that it was really positive and people said how much they learned and how much they felt it was valued within the Unipart way and, and the, co the colleagues that work with us as well and in terms of what we want to get out of it we would really like our data to continue to be quite transparent and give us an insight into the kind of benchmarks and things that we're achieving or not achieving and, and how to fix that and um, we'd like 
to uh, make sure our talent pipeline is um, growing meaning and longevity through equal opportunities at that level. And we, will, we are looking at our recruitment processes. I know some of our functions have started to adopt things like ethnicity data within those functions and we will consider blind recruitment in the future because that's something that's really a great way to kind of reflect on that. Um, we'd like a comprehensive plan and agenda which is started with our CSR agenda and it's underway already and a space for psychological safety to build those uncomfortable conversations which the workforce then understands and engages with and, and it becomes kind of part and parcel to the Unipart way. And you've had to factor into all of this. I'm sure not everybody's working from offices now in Unipart. So has that been a massive hurdle? Has that been something that you've overcome? We've overcome it quite well, actually. We've made sure that there's a lot of communication between the people working from home. We actually did an additional work from home survey to see how people were feeling and how engaged they were. And it was quite positive. We got a lot of feedback of how to kind of run engagement events. And then for those on the shop floor, we've ensured that each site has a well-being champion. So they champion both well-being, but also the diversity and inclusion agenda with us as well and, and help engage with those CSR activities. Well, for someone that joined in March, it sounds like you found your feet very quickly, obviously enjoying the role. Yeah, I really enjoy it, and it's something that I've always cared about and, and would love to work with an organisation that enables that change, so it's good. Well, lovely to meet you, and good luck in the future.